Well, it's cold and flu season, I've heard. For most of us young bucks, our bodies are coursing with phagocytes, a real thing. So the threat of serious sickness doesn't mean much. But for all you weak links out there with rundown immune systems, you're pretty much guaranteed at least seven days this winter of congestion, coughing, looping asinine fever dreams, and just blistering headaches, kind of like right here. And even though you've probably sat through health classes as a child or company-wide wellness programs as an adult, there are still some pretty crucial details about catching colds and flus that they for whatever conceivable reason just kept from us. You, you sickies. Number one, if you're dating or married to someone who's sick, the last thing you wanna do is kiss them on that biohazard of a mouth, right? Wrong, you neglectful jerk. Can't you see they're in pain? Studies have shown that you're far more likely to catch a cold just from sitting on the couch next to them than you are from full on making out. In fact, it's very, very difficult for you to even catch a cold or flu from your mouth. An amazing study from the 80s in which scientists essentially set 16 horny sick kids loose on a college campus showed that even after a full minute and a half of pure tongue high-fiving with the healthy folks, there was only one transmission of the virus. One, and the test subjects were at the pinnacle of mucus production while the healthy students were, you know, college kids, so probably not that healthy. Probably eating expired frosting off a Triscuit. The truth is that the transmission of colds almost always happens through your nose and your eyes. And even then, it's rarely because someone coughed up your nostrils or something. It's because you, my friend, are very handsy, and you likely touched a surface with a virus on it before jabbing your finger into your own eye. The common cold is surprisingly hard to catch, it turns out. Unless you're willing to do all of the work for the virus, you idiot. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> let's say you're good about washing your hands during cold season and you always make sure people get a clean bill of health before tonguing your eyeball. That shit is still airborne, right? There are infected mucus particles floating all around us in subways and I don't know, probably Quiznos. It's not like there's a definitive restraining order type distance you can keep from cold sufferers to make sure none of their coughs or sneezes land on you, right? Wrong. I mean, I'm not wrong. I was being you being wrong. It's six feet. Thanks to studies for how far sneezes and coughs can travel, the CDC has announced that giving sick people a buffer of six feet is enough to never catch what they're throwing. Of course, that assumes you know who's actually carrying a cold or flu virus, and the truth is, <laughs> you just don't. Number three, <laughs> symptomatic rhinovirus infection is the cold as you know it. It's the snotty, sweaty, visceral mess you're all accustomed to. And occasionally, uh, I, I don't know, it turns out to be a bacterial infection in your lungs. And I don't know, maybe it required an emergency trip to urgent care just before your health insurance turned over, just like it, like it knew, like it knew. What you may not be familiar with is asymptomatic rhinovirus infection, but you should be because it's 400% more common and just as infectious. It's the normal cold virus, but for whatever reason, some people just don't show any symptoms at all. So when you're shivering on the couch watching daytime court shows, trying to feverishly sleuth out who the asshole was who infected you, who, who made you feel like this, you are almost always wrong. There's a four to one chance it was someone who didn't even know they were a carrier, just wandering around the office, breathing into all the cubicles and joking about how tired everyone looks lately. Or, if you're that guy, maybe take it easy on everyone around you because it very well may be your fault, all right? So maybe lay off. Adam, number four. <laughs> when you get a cold or the flu, because you will inevitably get the cold or the flu at some point, treating your symptoms is absolutely fine. Yes, coughing and sneezing and excess mucus production are all of your body's natural defenses against invading sickness, so they are technically doing their jobs. Here's the thing, your body is not great at dealing with colds. It panics and tries to expel everything at once in a big, wet explosion. But once the virus has a hold, all your coughing and sneezing isn't helping you. It's only spreading that shit to new hosts. So the best thing you can do is just admit when you're sick and treat it and then wait it out until you're healthy again. Like me. <laughs> I gotta lie down. Thank you everybody for watching this video about being sick. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, you can do so somewhere on this screen. Also, if you don't agree with anything that I said or you've got other facts about colds that you think are true, probably not because I looked up everything, you can put them down in the comments section. Or if you know some good hospitals in my area, that would also be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you everybody for watching this video about being sick. 
Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, you can do so somewhere on this screen. Also, if you don't agree with anything that I said or you've got other facts about colds that you think are true, probably not because I looked up everything, you can put them down in the comments section. Or if you know some good hospitals in my area, that would also be very helpful. Thank you.